Hello, my name is Tyler, and in this video I will be demonstrating the extraction of DNA from soil using the Mobile PowerMax DNA Extraction Kit. To perform many of the methods outlined in this video, you will need to be familiar with some common pieces of equipment and how they are used in a microbiology lab. In addition, I will be outlining the science behind some of the steps in the protocol for DNA extraction for a better understanding of the process. For this video, we will be using a Mobile PowerMax Soil DNA Isolation Kit which is similar to Mobile's other available kits, but specially made for large-scale extraction from soil samples. Throughout this protocol, latex gloves should be worn at all times, as the natural DNA enzymes on your skin can easily degrade your product if you should happen to touch something going into the mixture. Additionally, you will need access to some pipettes, both 5 milliliter and 25 milliliter, and some sort of bulbar apparatus to use with the pipettes, like this automatic pipetter. Finally, a centrifuge and vortex will be required, as well as a bucket of ice to complete the procedure. In the kit, you will see a wide range of solutions in labeled bottles, as well as a few different bags of tubes and filters. When adhering to the standard extraction protocol, each of the solutions will be used in a numerical order, but I will be outlining the purpose of each solution so that the protocol can be changed should other circumstances arise. To start though, we need a soil sample that the DNA will be extracted from. To get sufficient DNA, the amount of soil used needs to generally be between 5 and 10 grams, although less can be used if necessary. In this case, I will use 5 grams wet weight of soil weighed out on this scale. Next, we need a power bead tube. Make sure it is not one of the normal tubes in the kit, as the extraction will not succeed if there are no beads present in this step. You should also be careful not to fill the tubes too full, or well, the efficiency of the extraction will be reduced significantly. Now, 15 milliliters of the power bead solution is added to one of the power bead tubes. The soil sample is now added to the tube with the solution in it. Next, we vortex the tube on a mechanical vortex like this one for approximately one minute. Next, you want to take solution C1 and check for precipitation. This is rare, but if any precipitate is seen, heating the solution will redissolve the precipitate. If solution C1 looks good, Take 1.2 milliliters and add this to the bead tube with the soil. And then invert several times. Next, we will place the bead tube with the two solutions in soil onto the vortexer for 10 minutes at the maximum speed. If a vortexing machine is unavailable, the tubes can be placed in a shaking water bath set at 60 degrees Celsius for 30 minutes at the maximum shaking speed. This step was mechanically lysing the cells present in the soil sample with the beads, which released all the contents of the cells, including the DNA. However, too much vortexing on this step could not only lyse the cells, but also result in shearing of the DNA, which can result in poor product. So if you end up with short fragments of DNA in the final product, chances are the mixture is vortexed for too long. After the vortexing has completed, you will want to take the tube and centrifuge it. The centrifuge should be set at 2500 G for three minutes. After centrifugation, carefully remove the supernatant by pipetting the liquid up, being careful to avoid disturbing the pellet at the bottom of the tube. This supernatant is then transferred to a new clean collection tube, which can be found in the kit. You will notice that the supernatant will most likely not be completely clear after transfer, with soil particles and color remaining. This is to be expected. Humic acids co-extract with the DNA, causing this brown color, but the later steps will begin to remove these. To the supernatant in the collection tube, add 5 milliliters of solution C2 to the mix. 
and then invert twice, like so. Incubate this mix at a temperature of 4 degrees Celsius in an ice bucket for 10 minutes. Solution C2 contains a chemical which is able to precipitate organic and inorganic material that is not DNA, which serves to chemically purify the product. It is able to remove cell particles, enzymes, and other proteins, making it easier to purify only the DNA in the final solution.